you can't get to a position of leadership within you or without having done a whole lot of good work. Bob brought integrity, a lot of integrity with him. These picket lines are about being part of the community. There, there's people here, there's families here. We're not just gonna sit here and sit with a gloom face and, and say that, you know, poor us, poor us. We're gonna fight this fight and that means we're gonna bring people out and we're gonna take on this challenge. Hard work. We have shut that site down completely. Not a truck has gone in or left that warehouse since Monday morning. We'll be in court with those bastards on Monday and never back down, never back down. We care about the collective good. That's why we're here, that's why we're in this, and we will reverse this decision, and General Motors can do it now. They can do it in a boardroom, or they can do it through fucking struggle, whatever they want to do. He's a go-getter, he's a doer. I mean, you don't have to kick Bob in the ass to get things done. Bob has been at the forefront of so many big fights. Whether or not it was picket line, whether it was plant occupations, Bob was always there. He was never afraid to kick open the door and he'll always be remembered as a fierce competitor. I've had a, an incredible career in, uh, in the union life as a result of running for a job one day in 1984. My life's work has been to help others to, to try and take on those fights. And you know, every role that he's played in the organization, he's done so with a lot of credibility, humility, honesty, and quite frankly, he's gotten to a, one of the top positions in the union, and those things don't happen by accident. They happen when you have the support and respect of your colleagues, your peers, and the members. And to have somebody like him lead you and teach you the ways of bargaining was absolutely essential to my, my position where I am today. He is one of those people um, that you're comfortable with right away. He's just right there. He's grassroots. He understands what we go through every day. You go up, you see him, you talk to him. He has an open ear. His heart is open. He always gives 110%. I take it very seriously, especially being out of General Motors, where my plant's done, and I got 2,500 people drawing a pension out of GM. I got a father in St. Catharines drawing a pension out of GM on this trust plant. So I take it very, very serious. But my obligation, all of our obligations, is to the trust and is to the members in the plant. And the members that are on this are the best people to do the job with a lifelong commitment. <laughs> Have you arrested for trespassing? My name is Bob Orr. I work for Unifor. I'm really? Assistant Jerry Dias. My name is Robert. I'm the coordinator of security for this facility. I'm asking you to get out of my face. Me. Back away. Get out, out of my face. Get the fuck out of my face. And it was through Bob Orr's leadership, perseverance, and guts we effectively uh, shut down that operation for the better part of 48 hours. We can respond appropriately. Uh, it's it's uh, funny that I did get arrested, but. That just served to heighten the struggle, and I'll tell you, whenever people read about battles we have and how far we are to go, it makes other employers less likely to fight us, so I have no regrets about that. Do I have any dirt? Well, I'm not going to call it dirt, but I did have an upper hand with Bob because uh, his wife, now Kellyanne, was our health care representative of our executive board for six years until Bob came along and swooped her off her feet, but if I had any difficulties with Bob, all it took was one phone call to Kellyanne and things would be resolved. I can't repeat it, or Bob would probably beat me up, so. <laughs> when I heard he was retiring, I was heartbroken because he's one of the greatest leaders our union will ever have and has taught many of us how to be great leaders how to be amazing activists and friends. He'll be missed. He'll be deeply missed. Um, he's going to get told by me, answer your phone because I'm still going to lean on you. But I know that he's not going anywhere, um, but that he will continue on his next journey, which will allow him maybe some more time because this, this career, this love, this passion that we have for the union that he specifically has, he gave his all. So. Yeah, I, I'm gonna miss him. I'm gonna miss him a lot. I love him and I'll miss him and I know that if I call upon him, he'll be there, so that's always nice. All of us can make tomorrow a better place regardless of what happened yesterday. And together, I think we've done that. We've always strove to do that. We always tried to do that as, a, as an organization and I have stood beside so many good people. It's important that everyone use your voice, help shape our union, help shape our next fight. That's, what, that's your role. Bob, you and I cut our teeth together in the labor movement over 30 years ago, and you and I have been running together as a team ever since. 
I just want to wish you and Kellyanne the best as you move into the next venture in your life. We know that you're just a phone call away. Good luck, my friend. You've earned it. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your friendship. And I want to wish you a long, happy, successful retirement. Well done, brother. Uh, you are an amazing ally, um, a brother in all contexts of the, of the definition. You've been there for so many of us and definitely made space for future generations coming into this union. So you're going to be missed. You've certainly set the bar high for all of us, and we certainly set something for us to strive towards. Uh, well done, brother, well done. If there's anything you ever need, always remember where home is, and it's here at Unifor Local 636. Well done, my friend, well done. Oh, no. Just a great guy, that's all. <laughs>